Okay, today on the show, we have Isaac Howard joining us. He is currently lighting it up at the U.S. National Development Program, and he's projected first-round pick in the upcoming NHL draft. Ike, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming on again. Uh, it's nice having you on for a second time here. I can't remember when we had you on before, but it was for sure over a year ago. So, uh, Do you even just, remember that, by the way? Yeah, that was quite a while ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember it was, it was actually on last season, but yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, like not last summer, but maybe the summer before or something like that. But anyway, how have you been doing lately? Where are you now? And just talk about the season so far so far for you with your success and everything that you've had. Yeah, so so I'm doing good. Uh, I'm back in my second second season uh, with the U.S. NTDP. And, uh, you know, the season, season's going good. Um, you know, I think we got, we got about 16 games left, so kind of at the back half of it. But, you know, just throughout the season, uh, I've been playing well and, and our team's been playing well. Um, you know, we played a lot of college games this year, which which is a, a, a good jump to have. He was playing against the older kids. So just throughout the whole season, I mean, it's been, it's been going really smooth. What's the confidence level at right now? Just looking at the points, 44 and 37 games, you're second on the team in points. So I'm sure you're feeling pretty good about that right now. But how's the confidence level? Yeah, I mean, I'm always a guy with high confidence, so um, it's just always it's still high, obviously. And uh, you know, I think offensively, I definitely I'm, I'm hitting my stride here late in the season. I got I got a lot more in me the last 16 or so. Um, a little bit in the season, that's that was uh, you know difficult to find the back in that, but that always happens every now and then. So, you know, I think um, I'm just excited for the, the last couple of games we got. That kind of leads into my next question. So I was just kind of looking at some scouting reports and. Everyone seems to talk about how much of a good goal scorer you are. Just uh, has that always been kind of your style of play? And how how do you work on your shot? And what makes you such a good goal scorer? That so many people talk about it. Yeah, I mean that's at the end of the day, that's that's what I love to do. You know, I'm on the ice. I want to score. It's it's the uh, it's the best feeling for me. So I think just having that, you know, that knack for scoring goals and and the knack to always to to want to score and and the passion that I play with um, and the excitement I get when I score. And uh, yeah, I think I've, I've always kind of had that, had that with me throughout my career. Um, but just working on it, like after, after uh, practice or whatever, staying out, getting some shots, some one timers and uh, just working on it in, in the shooting room and stuff like that. Is there anybody in the NHL that you kind of like model your game after in, re- in regards to your goal scoring abilities or just someone that you, you watch a lot of tape of someone that you want to play like? Yeah, I mean, there's a like, like Jeff's like Jeff Skinner in his prime, you know, when he when he had his 40, 40 something goal season. Like, I like to, you know, kind of same same build frame. Um, you know, he he's he's a guy like that season because he can he can find ways to score. You know, anyways on a breakaway, two on one, net front, you know, rebounds, whatever. And uh, you know, right now Jake Gensel is a guy I like to watch too. Um, I just think he's smart with the puck all around. Um, you know, again, he can kind of – I like scoring it in any kind of ways, you know, not just my shot, not just uh, a deke or whatever, you know, getting open, find soft areas and stuff. I was, I was going to save this till later, but Matt brought up uh, scouting reports. So I, 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 like to, I like to find some of the scouting reports that guys have on, on some of the guests, and I like to read them. So I'm going to read a few of the short ones, and you just give me like, a, like yep, you're good with that, or like, <laughs> I'm not, not too sure about that one, okay? So – the uh, I'll read one that's a little negative, and then and then two good ones. Um, so, uh, the University of Miss, Miss, uh, Minnesota Duluth commit needs to get better off the puck and become stronger to be a more consistent player. Is that okay? Are we good with that? Because well, we can def- definitely not go with that. But I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, there, there's so many opinions out there. You know, like it's just on what game you guys seen or, or whatever. But yeah. Like I've been, I've been working on my strength all off season mm-hmm. this season. Uh, I think I'm, I'm really on my skates and stuff, and you know, playing without the puck. That's that's how I, I score most of my goals is off the puck. You know, yeah. find stuff. Because what we what we do is you become you become our friend when you come on Chump Talk. So we'll we'll find out who these quotes are from, and if you don't like them, we'll we'll get in contact with these guys and, <laughs> and make sure they make sure they know their place. That guy's name is Brock Oten, so he'll be getting oh, Brock. Uh, email email from uh, Chump Talk. Uh, here's here's one from Sam Cosentino of Sportsnet. Um, has the ability to find open ice to u- utilize his array of finishing skills. So did you know you have an array of finishing skills? Yeah, I mean that's. <laughs> That's what I like. That those are the ones I like. Uh, there you go. I, 
people can find the open ice and soft ice. That's, I mean, that is how I, how I get open and score a lot of goals. Okay, last one. Uh, Howard has very good vision and passing skills. He uses his ability to control the puck to create plays for teammates. He can also be a goal scorer. Good? Yeah. Uh, highlighting the playmaking ability there a little bit. I think that goes, like, sometimes can get underestimated with me. Um, but, yeah. like, I think I've been making good plays out there and stuff like that and setting guys up. Perfect. Okay, so you let us, let us know of any of these ones you don't like. You just give us, uh, give us a name and we'll do some hunting. Yeah. <laughs> so now, now that we're talking about what people kind of think of your playing abilities, you take this into your draft year. Obviously, you're a draft eligible for the 2022 draft this off season. Just what, what does the year look like for you? When you know you constantly got opinions about you, you know you got like rankings coming out with drafts. Just how do you kind of stay on course and kind of put that all to the side? Because I'm sure at times it's got to be a uh, you know difficult not to listen to when your name's being talked about and, and you see a lot of people thinking that you could be a first John draft pick. So obviously uh, there, there's a lot of hype around your name and I'm sure there's hundreds of opinions out there too. Yeah. I mean, I think the most important thing is just obviously the hockey aspect. Like for me, just obviously blocking that out and going out, going out there and playing. Um, Cause I mean, at the end of the day, all the rankings and all the notes and from the NHL scouts and stuff like that, that's, that make the, you know, the decision. So it's kind of easy for me to, to block that out and, and just enjoy the year. And, and uh, you know, I mean, it's going to be a great year. So I kind of just, just want to enjoy it and, and block all that extra stuff out. Awesome. Has there been a favorite moment of the season so far for you? And if, if so, what is that? Um, I would have to say, you know, being a uh, winning Switzerland was fun. Um, that's definitely up there. We, I think we outscored our opponents like 30 to five or something. We kind of stormed that. Um, I think that was, that was early in the season and uh, being North Dakota was, um, it was the first time NTDP has beaten North Dakota. So we took them down two zero. So that was a, that was a fun one too. You're committed to University of Minnesota Duluth for next season. Just talk about what that process was like for you. Were you looking at other college universities or whatever? Or what came to that decision? And how long ago did you have to make that decision too, by the way? Yeah, so I, I made that decision my freshman year, so about three years ago. Wow. And um, the, the decision was just, um, you know, I, obviously I want to go the NCAA route over the CHL route. And, uh, you know, I was looking looking and talking to uh, about college. Um, you know, Duluth took out to me because they just came off back-to-back national championships. And, um you know, just their ability to, to show up every year and, and win or, or get to the Frozen Four or whatever, um, you know, that, that excited me because, you know, next year I'm going in or, you know, I want to be in those big games and those big moments. So the fact that they kept doing it year after year, um, you know, I kind of kind of felt like that was a good decision for me. How much contact do they have with you? Because obviously you said you committed in, in your freshman year, though, so that's a number of years ago. So just in, in that time, because that's a lot of time from then to – like when uh, next season will be coming up. So just how much contact do they have with you during that time? Is it something that you kind of do more in the summers with the university and you just kind of focus on your other stuff during uh, the regular season for your USDP and the USHL or how does that work for you? Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't think, you know, it's not, it's not like every day or every week or anything like that. Um, I think it's picked up more this year, you know, just texts and calls or whatever, because oh. I'm obviously going in next season. So, you know, I'm going to be playing for them finally, but, about the first couple of years, um, you know, I was just young. So, I mean, just calls and, and texts or checking in here or there and just kind of kind of staying in touch still. So. Okay, we kind of talked about it a little bit before we started recording, but can you just give a quick explanation? Because a lot of our listeners will be Canadian listeners. Obviously, you're playing in the States right now. So, you're on the National Development Program, but then your team also plays in the USHL. So, kind of explain how that works. What teams are you guys mostly playing against? Is there a lot of tournaments? Just give us a quick breakdown on that. Yeah, so um, the USHL is the, the United States Hockey League, um, oh. and that's where you play. Around around I think twenty eight games uh, we play in that league, so that's split between our U eighteen team and U seventeen team. So we uh, we both split. We're technically one team in the USHL, um, and that's just there's a there's a lot of other junior teams in that. Um, so you know we split the games with the U seventeens obviously, and uh, and then the USDP is kind of 
that's like all of our games. So we're playing USHL, um, NCAA college teams, um, overseas, we're playing in Switzerland, Finland, Sweden, um, all those teams. Uh, so that's kind of like everything combined. And then the USHL is its own separate league that we do. Right. So you're, the level of competition you're playing against will be changing every game. Yeah, I mean, it's one weekend we could we could be playing the you know, Chicago Steel of the USHL. Yeah. And then Dakota, um, who's like a top 10 college team. You know, it's just right. uh, all over the place. Yeah, crazy. Wow. Yep. And then uh, just looking ahead to this, the rest of your season here, uh, what, what does that kind of look like? And what do you like individually uh, hope to get done just before you head into the draft? I'm sure there's goals or accomplishments that you have in mind uh, before your off season changes up here. Yeah. So um, like I said earlier, we got about 16 games left. Um, and then we got the U18 worlds, which is, um, you know, kind of the bread and butter, what, what we, the whole two years, what we've been working up to. So just uh, continue to play good, you know, as a team and individually these last couple couple of games. And then, um, you know, U18 Worlds is, is obviously what we've been looking forward to the whole two years. So going out there and, and enjoying it and, uh, you know, with the group that we have, um, we should definitely come back with that gold medal. So that's kind of the focus point here the last couple of months. I uh, want to take a break from hockey for a second. I got a, I got a few questions about your Instagram, actually um first off first off Iceman is the name can you is there some context behind that for us yeah so um you know just the nickname the boys been calling me okay. Iceman ironically my dad used to call me it um as nice. a kid growing up. yeah I'm always on the ice always wanted to be on the ice so you know I kind of kind of brought it back and you know, I think it's gonna be like kind of official name coming here I'll soon so I like it. Iceman, Iceman. We'll call you that from now on. Second question about the Instagram. Uh, when it was photo day for the national team, I noticed you have a, you went with the shaved head look. Um, is that, <laughs> it, what, talk me through that decision. Um, that was a decision in, in the summer. So we we're supposed to report here like August 30th and uh, mm-hmm. me and Ryan Chesley we work out together all summer and uh, our trainer is uh he always shaves his head always got a buzz cut or whatever so he's trying to get us to shave our heads because we have to have um short hair um so right. like a week before we left and and he decides to shave his head and i'm sitting there like no chance i'm doing that or whatever <laughs> and then he's kind of like come on you gotta do it yeah you, you gotta do it and i'm you know i didn't want to leave him out to dry so i <laughs> awesome yeah so i, I went full on buzz cut uh, i love it Wow, that's you know, bold. Not many people will do that. Yeah, you get you're going out on a limb there. Is there a, so you, is there there's a rule that there has to be short hair with the national development program? Yeah, it's our our strength coach. You know, he always preaches the short hair and and stuff. So you know, mm-hmm. fine tight, but so I just went right. full cut mode. All right, aerodynamic. I like that. And last, uh, last Instagram question. First of all, there, there's a few elite pictures on here. I think whoever your uh, photographer with the program is is doing their job well. But there is a uh, there is a tarps off working out photo. I'm um, just gonna need to hear the thoughts behind that that one. Um, we'll, we'll let you take it from there. <laughs> uh, obviously, I got a bunch of ladies following me on the Instagram. So there, you I got- <laughs> there you go. There you go. I take the tarp off every now and then and uh, that's good <laughs> let them know yeah. yeah that's that's about time somebody answers that question honestly i've asked that before and guys will be like oh yeah sure just happen to happen to be off and there's a picture that you're honest about it you just get you got to show what you're working with yeah, i'll be honest about that one, <laughs> <laughs> one more for you here yike just how much uh how much do you think about the draft and stuff like that i'm sure it's been a childhood dream for you so going into this uh, into the summer here just how much do you think about it and what are you looking forward to most? Cause it's, it's gotta be a, a very exciting time for you and your family to, to know that that's coming up and it'll be a, I'm sure a dream come true to be drafted wherever you get drafted to. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, definitely something I've obviously looked up to my whole life. And uh, just the fact that it's, you know, coming this summer is, is kind of nuts and, and crazy yeah. to, me. you know, during the season right now with all the games, like it's not really on my radar too much. Um, but once my season ends in May, like, I really won't have anything up until the draft. And that's when I kind of um, start thinking about, you know, what's really coming up and finally getting drafted in the NHL team and, and how special it's going to be. What was your uh, childhood team? 
Minnesota Wild. So I live about 25 minutes away from the ring. Um, so just going to their games, you know, as my fan, with my parents and stuff, uh, they were kind of my, my childhood team that I got to see most uh, live. So they're nasty this year. Eh? They're, they're yeah. a fun team to watch. Yeah, they're sweet. I just, uh, I just went to a game Saturday night, actually. We had nice. a go back home and, uh, yeah, they're they're fun to watch with Caprice off and Fial and stuff. Like. Yeah, they're 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 uh, steady and their back end's really good too. Um, last one I have, uh, you hear a lot about guys from from the past going into the NHL. There wasn't as much social media back then, so when they're going into the draft, they're not really sure where they're going. Obviously, they'd have an agent that can give them a bit of a range, but the the world we live in now, you can go on your phone and you can see probably already at this point, you could probably see 30 different mock drafts of the first round for the NHL. How hard is it being on social media, just like scrolling and, and you're obviously your name's going to pop up on some things and it's going to start to pop up uh, more as the, as the draft gets closer. Is it, do you try to not follow accounts like that or do you like seeing that or, or how hard is it to try to stay away from seeing that stuff? Yeah. I mean, you know, I definitely try to stay away from it and sometimes like, I mean, it could just pop up in your feed or whatever, but, um, but like I said, I mean, those, like most of the rankings and stuff, it's not like at the end of the day, it's going to be directly from, from the NHL scouts, the GM. And, you know, obviously they're not out there tweeting who they yeah. like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just kind of putting that into an aspect of things and, you know, just not, not really taking, taking rankings or positive comments or negative comments to heart, you know, it's, uh, you know, something that I just kind of want to block out. Love it. Love awesome. it. Well, we, we uh, appreciate you doing this. We're going to have to uh, try to keep following along with the career as, as things move up. We'd love to have you back on again. So uh, don't forget about us when you start, when you start getting big and uh, we'll do another interview. <laughs> Thanks guys. All right, All right man. Yep. Appreciate it. Have a good one.